Hello friends out there in YouTube land, Robert Ham here with Robert Ham Photography and today we're going over a new series and understanding my camera series specifically for you to help you understand exactly what your camera is doing and how to best make use of it. Today we're going to start off with the first part which is probably the most tricky for new photographers and that doesn't have to do with shutter, that doesn't have to do with aperture, it doesn't even have to do with film speed. It has to do with how the final image is prepared and that has to do with photometry, also known as metering, how your camera chooses to meter. Guys, I'd like to remind you that if you enjoy this content, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. It helps me out quite a bit and allows me to continue to bring you great content. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. There are several different ways that your camera can meter. Most cameras are going to meter one of three ways, which is either a spot, a matrix, or evaluative metering, or a center-weighted metering. And I've actually got some cameras right here to show you. A couple of them do happen to be instant cameras, which are some of my most enjoyable ones. And then I do have a film camera. This is a pretty interesting film camera, the Canon EF. So friends, there are many different ways that your camera can meter. One of them is actually like a spot. This camera right here has a spot meter. Spot metering is when the camera is metering the very center of the frame. And that's very important. Generally speaking, a spot meter can be moved around by choosing different spots within the actual metering segment of the camera. That could be shown by a filter array or some kind of system or a little grid setup that's on the camera, or it can be done electronically like on a DSLR. This particular camera does not have the ability to change the spot, and the spot metering takes place at the very center of the lens. Most of the time when spot metering is being used, you'll see something like this happen where the focus and the metering is acquired, and then a recompose. This is actually called focus and recompose, and what's happening at this point in time is that the center of the lens, the spot area of the lens, is being placed on the target of the subject that you want to be properly exposed, such as the face in a portrait. And then, you then recompose in order to make sure that the actual image is set up the way you want in the frame. It's called focus and recompose because that's exactly what you're doing. You're setting your spot, your focus, your exposure, and then you're recomposing to fill the frame with your subject nicely. Now, cameras like your cell phone and other DSLRs give you the ability to change that metering just by changing the spot. So you could forego having to do the recompose part if you just chose a different spot in the first place. However, for our purposes and for most film cameras that you might be using from the 1970s and 80s, you won't have the ability to change the spot. It'll just be the very center. The next one that we've got right here is kind of an in-between. We've got spot, now we're moving into what's called center-weighted. This Canon EF with this beautiful 300 millimeter lens right here is actually a really cool camera because it came out in between metering from the matrix or full evaluative metering and spot metering, which means that this is center-weighted, gives the focus and the weight of the metering towards the center area instead of the spot being just 2% or 1.5%. The center area in this case is more like 13 to 15 percent and then the bottom half of the frame when held in landscape mode like this has the secondary priority generally up to the next 40 percent of that with the rest of the frame being what would be considered the sky the crazy part about this is that when you move it over because the way that the camera is set up the metering moves as well so in this case when you're metering right here for a horizon or a landscape or a close-in portrait in landscape mode everything's fine because the sky is above the face is in the center and the ground is below and you don't want to prioritize for that bright sky you want to prioritize for the face in the foreground well that makes sense but if you are choosing to shoot in portrait mode with this camera you have to realize that the metering doesn't flip with you. It doesn't stay down there, I should say. It flips with you, and that means that with center weighted, you generally have to remember that not only is the camera waiting for the center, but it's also waiting for another particular part of the scene. In this case, with film cameras, you can't change that. Of course, with modern digital cameras, when you use center weight, you can actually choose different zones, and as you turn the camera into different orientations, the camera's smart enough to know which one to use. We're going to move over to the old granddaddy, the OG, the old gangster of them all. And this one is best shown using the TL70. I absolutely love this camera, by the way. I've been enjoying using it. But here we have a full matrix or evaluative meter. Now, 
Call this an evaluative meter isn't exactly the same today as this meter as actually used and implemented in this camera. Traditionally, evaluative or matrix metering actually are metering off of the refractive index of light. So they're full matrix refractive index metering. And I know that's a long name, but it, it more appropriately says what this camera is doing and what most cameras that are produced with a full matrix meter in the 1950s and 60s, this is kind of like the type of metering that they would use. And this was the original type of metering that you would get. The difference is here is that the, the actual meter is reading an entire scene, right? So it's reading a larger field of view most often than what the camera lens can actually show. So the metering in the camera isn't showing specifically the metering for your subject, it's showing the metering for a scene. In this particular camera, when you use it, you will see a little green light pop up down here in the top where it tells you if the camera is going to be able to expose the image properly. The thing that we have to remember is that this full matrix metering isn't actually telling us that the exposure on our subject will be correct, only that the exposure could be correct with the entire scene. And that's different. Spot metering and center weighted metering both prioritize the subject in some way. Matrix metering prioritizes the scene and your subject isn't always the only thing that it's taking into account when it's making its metering. That means that out of all of them, the one that you would find most useful with the Sony 16 rule is matrix metering, mainly because it's the metering that allows the most for manual control. On a camera like the TL70, we have full aperture priority. Although it would be better to have full manual control with a matrix meter, at least we can use that information for telling us whether or not the scene could be properly exposed to help us make some great decisions. Otherwise, if we just had a spot meter in it, then we would have a much more difficult time adjusting the camera because the camera would be making decisions based on what was only in the center area or the center weighted area or that spot area rather than the entire scene. Because it's a film camera and it's shooting Instax film, we need to have a little bit more granular control over the manual settings. And we can use those things like exposure compensation sliders and neutral density filters to help us. So today we've talked about all kinds of things, specifically metering and how the different meters work. We've also discussed how the meters work best and in what uses you could find a spot or a center weighted meter or a matrix meter. In all likelihood, the center weighted meter is kind of the meter that's the in-between. Most camera systems won't use these anymore. More advanced camera systems use an evaluation meter matrix that allow this, the computer in the camera to actually meter for your focus point and the 60% of the frame that's around that focus point and then deprioritize anything else. And those types of full matrix evaluative meters really do do a very good job of getting a very correct exposure. And that's something that we can, can take pride in and enjoy when we're shooting with not only our cell phone but our DSLR. When we get into film, the meter matters much more. And the one that's kind of gone by the wayside is the center weighted meter. The one that's picked up most popularity is the spot meter. And the one that you'll use with most manual controls is the matrix meter. Guys, I'm Robert Hand with Robert Hand Photography. Today we've been going over metering modes for your cameras. I hope that I have helped you understand spot, meter, and center weighted metering. I'm Robert Hand. I want to thank you for watching, and I want to remind you that I will catch you on the flip side.